this is just a quick extra video today about this unusual tape. So I'll start back at the beginning. At the end of July, a chap from the US called Mike got in touch with the Museum of Obsolete Media to ask if anyone there could help him transfer the audio from a DC International cassette. Now, the Museum of Obsolete Media only keep the media, not the machines on which to play them. So they put the call out on Twitter to see if anyone could help, and someone responded and directed them to my video on that format. Now, for those who don't know, DC International was Grundig's rival to the Philips Compact Cassette. It's a bit of a weird tale, so if you want to know more about it, there's a link to my video on that one at the top of the screen. But anyway, I got the email asking if I was able to help Mike. The story was that unfortunately Mike's wife is, is quite ill at the moment and she's in her 80s. And on this uh, DC International cassette was some recordings of uh, long since past relatives and Mike thought it'd be nice for his wife to hear these voices after all these years. So, I mean, how could you turn something like that down? So, of course, I said, yeah, sure, I'll help out. So after I'd been in contact with him, a few days later, the cassette arrived. So I got my DC International machine out, got the cassette out of the box, put it in the machine, and, well, it didn't fit. It was too small. Now, I hadn't looked at it before I started. I just assumed it was a DC International cassette, but it seems that Mike was mistaken, and this is just a normal cassette. Going back to the earlier video, you'll see that the DC is quite a bit larger than a normal cassette. Interestingly though, the cassette he'd sent over seemed to be a particularly early example of a cassette, as the very first ones from the early 1960s didn't have right protect notches on the top. That feature was added in later. Well, since I got the tape, I thought I might as well carry on and copy it across, so I got out my cassette recorder, popped the tape in, and... Again, it didn't fit, but this time it was too large. It's a little bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, this story, but it also begs the question, what the heck kind of weird cassette is this? It's really only when you put it next to a normal cassette that you notice the differences. The mystery cassette is a tiny bit taller and a fraction wider than a normal one. It uses the same width of tape inside, but the tape path looks a little bit different with less cutouts in the plastic, and the four holes towards the bottom of the shell are also in different locations. And also, because of the wider shell, these spool holes are fractionally wider apart. So if I want to copy the audio off this tape, but the cassette won't fit into any of my machines, the only thing I can try and do is to open up the shell of the cassette, take the reels of tape out, transplant them into a normal cassette shell, and hope that once they're in there, the plastic hubs in the centre are the same size as those on a normal cassette, so it all spins freely inside the case, and then I can play it back on a normal cassette player. Okay, so there we have it. We've got the old tape in this new shell. It seems to rotate fine as well, so the only question that remains now is, will it play okay in a normal compact cassette deck? Was it recorded at a different speed? Are the tracks laid out differently? Well, let's find out. backwards. To explain why it's playing in reverse, if we look at a normal cassette, the tape moves from this spool to the other one, passing across the heads as it does so. The active part of the tape head that picks up the audio is towards the bottom. So if it's playing backwards, that means the tape head in the machine that this was recorded on was the other way up. So when I play it back in a normal cassette player, I'm effectively listening to the wrong side of the tape. <laughs> But once the audio was in audacity, it's a very simple matter of just reversing it to get it to play the right direction. We had a terrible fight about a week ago. We had a fight really over a silly little nothing that Edgar used to take out. And I'm... <laughs> It turns out that was a recording of Joan Rivers from a 60s TV appearance. It was listed on the label as Girl Comedian. Now, Mike was really more interested in hearing the family recordings that are also on the tape, and it turned out that it was a 60-minute tape, 30 minutes aside, and it does play back at the same speed as a normal cassette, even though it's using the tracks in the reverse order. Anyway, after capturing the whole tape, I emailed Mike the files and told him about the weird tape format mystery, and this sparked a vague memory. He seemed to recall a department store, possibly Sears Roebuck, had introduced their own incompatible format when cassettes were new. The idea being to tie you in to only buying your blank tapes from Sears. But he said maybe he's mistaken as well. It's a long time ago. So I did a search for Sears cassette to try and find out more. But of course, it's just brought up thousands of irrelevant hits about normal cassette decks. 
However, Mike had also said there was no need to send him the tape back, it wasn't any use to him now, so I decided to remove the labels to see if there was any concealed markings underneath that might reveal where it came from. And sure enough, there was one illegible label, but with the help of a drop of water, the text underneath this became visible. And it is a Sears tape cartridge. They'd chosen to continue with the tradition of naming enclosed tape formats as cartridges. The word cassette only really turned up with the European compact cassette. The previous US formats like NAB, 4-track and 8-track, those were all cartridges. But going back and searching for Sears tape cartridge surprisingly didn't reveal really anything else, any documents about it, any photos of the tapes themselves. Uh, there's very little mention other than just a couple of pictures of machines that were for sale on eBay. And looking at these before today, I really would have just assumed they were standard cassette recorders. But this really has got to be one of the most cynical formats ever created unnecessarily and deliberately made incompatible not for any legitimate reasons to bring improved usability or enhanced performance no purely to tie the poor sucker who bought the recorder into buying all their future tapes from sears I can see why people would rather forget this one existed especially if you'd have bought one back in the day but anyway that's it for this quick video as always thanks for watching